Hi everybody, Michelle Kunz here. I'm going to talk about the new changes to basic cardiac life support, CPR. So there were some major changes in October and November in American Heart Association recommendations for basic cardiac life support. So one of the most uh, right up front in your face changes was not ABC anymore, it's CAB. So that's pretty interesting. So airway and breathing is not the priority anymore in adults of cardiac arrest. So remember, it's adults of cardiac arrest. If you're approaching a, a victim on the floor that's in cardiac arrest, the first thing you're going to do is take a good look. And when you look at them and you see that they're really not responsive, they're, they don't look like they're breathing, you are going to go directly to circulation. So C is for circulation. So that's first now. And then it's A and B, airway and breathing. So they say the adult in cardiac arrest has probably close to 10 minutes of oxygen in their body to, to, to last until maybe 911 comes. So, you know, the first thing we really do is phone first. You need to get 911 on the way with, it, you know, emergency equipment so they can take care of the airway and the breathing part for us. So not only is this an advantage for us, you know, in the street where many people are afraid to do mouth to mouth on victims, it is an advantage for the victim to get compressions done right away to, you know, improve or increase or continue circulation throughout the body. So they really are downplaying that whole look, listen and feel for breathing because it takes too long. It's very difficult. And then it's even difficult to find a pulse on somebody when you have just maybe been running to the scene or you're very nervous or anxious yourself as a rescuer. So it is a very smart move by American Heart Association to say this is going to work for the patients and us to begin CPR. Number one, the victim's on the ground. That's not a good sign to begin with, is it? So if they look like they're, you know, not breathing, they look like they're not going to respond to us, they might look blue, we're going to start chest compressions. And, you know, when you take your CPR certification course, you know that you'll be, you know, pressing with two hands, you know, right in between um, the nipple line, mid-sternum, right in the center of the chest. You'll compre be compressing deep and hard. And it's two inches at least. And at the rate is at least 100. When we used to say at 100, now it's at least. Remember that recoil, which means coming back off the chest, is probably the most important part of chest compressions. Because you really want to do a good job in going all the way down and all the way up. Really making that heart work. So we're going to do high quality CPR, which is the two minutes, which for the one rescuer is 30 compressions to two breaths. Five cycles of 30 to two is the two minutes. So that is CPR for uh, one and two rescuer adult CPR, 30 to two, five cycles. So get right down to those compressions is what we're looking for now. They talked a little bit about choking in the new algorithms, and you've been learning how to do, you know, your knuckle right into the abdomen, belly button area, and you're gonna be pulling inward and upward abdominal thrusts for the conscious choking victim. Yes, that's what they still highly recommend, and that is probably 99.9% .9 effective. I think it's in the World Book of Records for nine feet to get that obstruction out. They do talk about if you feel like that is unsuccessful, they even talk about adding the chest compressions in, even banging on the, somebody's back. We know everybody talks about their mother hitting them on the back and that works. So American Heart Association recognizes that we probably should try anything possibly to get the obstruction out. Abdominal thrust first, because I think that's what we know how to do, and I think that's what works best. If this does not work, you know your victim that's choking will become unconscious, will glide them safely to the floor, and begin chest compressions. Five cycles of 30 to 2 until the obstruction comes out. Now if you were to come across somebody that was unconscious on the ground, that was choking, but we wouldn't know about it, you would begin, 
the chest compressions because they were unconscious, their color probably wasn't good, and there wasn't any sign of movement or breathing. So we're told now to begin chest compressions. So when you do finish your 30 compressions and you go to give you two breaths, that's when you'll recognize that there's an obstruction. So, you know, maybe at that time, um, just because that's what we naturally do is reposition and try those two breaths again, you'll certainly confirm that your victim has an obstruction. And for confirmed obstructed airway, we continue CPR, chest compressions, 30 compressions, and ventilations, two breaths, until our victim is breathing. If um, somebody comes along to help you, we could have two rescue CPR, which is also 30 to 2 in the adults. So I hope that clears up some questions about the CABs of CPR, uh, compressions first now, and about choking and how to deal with somebody who's unconscious choking and making sure we focus on the compressions. So it's all about the compressions in 2010 and 2011. So thanks for listening. I'm looking forward to your emails or calls about the changes, any questions that you have or suggestions. I hope to make more videos on more of the changes that are coming out. Thank you.